so many things Like how to love And how to lose And how to choose Well, hello, this is Linda Carboneau and welcome to another edition of Walking Through Life. Today I'm really excited. I happen to have a guest by the name of Mike Fitzpatrick. Did I say it right? You said it absolutely correct, Fitzpatrick. And uh, you are somebody that has uh, started the process in starting a sober club. And That's correct. That's and I, correct. Think, I think the idea is so people would know exactly why you're doing that. Maybe you could share a little bit of your story. Okay. Um, I am a, a person in long-term recovery uh, that had struggles with substance use disorder. Um, and it brought, me, it brought me to my knees. Um, opiates, heroin, drugs, everything. I, I dabbled into all types of stuff and my life became unmanageable. Um, I, you know, had family alienated against me. I burned bridges wherever I went. Yeah. Um, I became the, like, the embodiment of everything that's negative and wrong. And I, I hurt the people I love the most. Um, I, I ended up, as a result of my addiction, I ended up at Walpole State Prison mm. for 10 years of my youth. Wow. Robbed of my youth, I hurt people, I lied, I manipulated, I stole, I convinced others to give me drugs. Um, and I grew, up, I grew up in a dysfunctional Irish family. Mm. And, and my, my, my stepfather and my mother, they were alcoholics, drug addicts, career criminals, that's like all the life I knew. Uh, so there was a progressive pattern that kept happening and, and, and as I got older, I got worse. And then, like I said, drugs and alcohol, I, I, I was sent because of my abusive background and I had the worst child abuse case in the state of Massachusetts. It's on file at the old ad care, which used to be City Hospital in Worcester, Mass, mm -hmm. is where I, I'm originally from. Um, I, I just progressively got worse and then, and then I was placed in foster care at an early age, didn't come to know a real family until years later, like I was like 12 years old and by then the, the dysfunctional patterns of my destructive life already took place in root and I had a speech impediment growing up, I, I was uh, over 300 pounds, I was a heavy child. Um, I built invisible walls to protect myself. Mm -hmm. I also had rage and, and, and it just uh, culminated and it just kept progressively getting worse and my actions, behavior towards other people was bad. I um, had no conscience. The, the alcohol, the drugs, the opiates, the heroin, it took over my whole persona so I had no moral compass to guide me. I had I I was like the embodiment of evil, and and just dysfunctionality. So then I ended up um, like it progressively got worse, and I got adopted by these these loving parents, Bob and Sandy Sear. But I didn't know they were loving until like years later, when my pat my destructive nature uh, ended. Uh, so I ended up leaving New Hampshire, getting adopted, and then. I uh, briefly joined the service, um, and I, and I uh, was in the military briefly. I ended up getting kicked out because of drugs and drinking, um, and I'm not proud of that. Um, and then I found out my real mother died, and it really triggered me. And I ended up um, really going into drugs and alcohol, and then it caught up with me. My destructive path caught up with me, and I ended up... Uh, going going to prison, you know, in my early teens, and I ended up doing ten years, learning how to survive and live, um, and and just survive. And that's where I found recovery is inside prison. Um, but it still didn't sink in. I got out. I got out, and I found this loving. Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh. No, no, no. That's not, that's all right. All right. Are you, are you okay? Take, I'm gonna make a mark. Do you need water? <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. 
I'm gonna make a mark. Am I going too quick? No, no. Okay. No, you're fine. It's me. Okay. <coughs> I'm choking on something. If I'm going too quick, let me know. Okay. No, you're 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 fine. Okay. I mean, you're doing really good. And okay. And when we get to the um, recovery part. Oh, hey. Wanna, All hey, right. You Thank you. We want to make sure that you know you you say, you know how long you've been sober. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, yeah. Do you want to, for cutting purposes, uh, Linda? Do you want to uh, ask a question uh, about something you was just saying? And so we'll just kind of cut to you, and it'll look. Yeah. Good. Sure. That doesn't happen. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. All right. Look. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask me anything. <laughs> I'm okay. I need my own skin today. <laughs> so, I just don't be coughing. I'm starting. No, no. Okay, I'm gonna give a sign when I'm ready to start again. That sounds good. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so right. anyway, Mike, I'm interested to know. Uh, you were talking about prison and how you went to prison, and mm -hmm. that's where you found recovery was in prison. That's what, where. What the happened th that uh, that made you have a desire to? Um, well, drink, like drinking and drugging ruined everything, and um, and as a result, I almost killed two people, and I ended up, as a result of my drugs and drinking, I ended up in prison, and 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 I discovered recovery in there, and then so I wanted to know more, but I wasn't ready yet to receive it. I I had a head knowledge of it, and the seed was planted, but I wasn't ready yet to, to take it. I had to to have relapses and slips and go in and out. Um, and then when I finally got released from prison, my story didn't end. Like I, I ran into these wonderful um, Christians that had a coffee house and they catered to drug addicts and alcoholics and they were recovering addicts and alcoholics themselves. So they, they really planted the seed and said, you know, you can change and you could better your life and you could do stuff that's positive. And so I, I said, all right, God, I need help. I need, I need you to change me because I, I just got released from prison and I survived 10 years in Walpole, Norfolk, Gardner, Shirley. I helped build Shirley Media in prison. And, and so I, I, I really was hungering for something to fill the void. Yeah and something other than alcohol and drugs, and I was tired of, of my life. I was mm -hmm. tired of everything and, and not going anywhere and just uh, a sad existence. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I said, all right, I'll, I'll, they, they said, why don't you see if God's real? So, so I said, all right, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. So I, I, I left and I was trying to find my real family and I hadn't seen my real family in years. Uh, because I was in prison, and then I, I left New Hampshire, and I was trying to track down my real relatives, and I found them, um, and and then and then I was like, oh, elated. But my real father w wanted nothing to do with me, and so I always had that guilt, and you know, he, I'm not feeling loved and, and accepted. So the, these people, I finally accepted. They they said, you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus, and He can really change you. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it till years later, but I, I said, yeah. So I opened my heart, let, let Jesus come in, take over my life and, and help me. And then I met a beautiful woman. I went to Bible Academy in the Berkshires. I went to Colvin Academy, uh, studied the Bible, really mm -hmm. applied myself. Uh, and then, so, so then my life started to change and I met a beautiful Christian woman um, and and we fell in love, had a, had a beautiful daughter. Well, yeah. I, like I, I wasn't sure it was mine, but I, I accepted her, and I, I'm pretty sure. Um, and and then and then they both were taken from me. Um, oh. They got killed by a drunk driver, oh. and my life took a worse turn again. And I left the faith. I left the ministry. Okay. I gave up on God, and 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 then I got back into drugs again. Uh, the only life I was comfortable with was being dysfunctional and that's all I knew. Right. So I find, I went back and then my heart, my heart, I was like I said, ripping, running, hurting people, burning bridges. I had no moral compass or, or moral character or fiber, integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, so my heart, my heart gave out. I was clinically, I died for two minutes wow. and God brought me back. Mm. There was a stranger who came by. I was, I OD'd 
in the back of an alley. They didn't have Narcan. They didn't no. have any Narcan back then. Yeah. This guy brought me back. I don't know who he was to this day. Mm -hmm. he, he saved my life, and then I decided I've had enough, so That's I left. It. Yeah, you got to the point where... Um, this is it. I mean, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm, right. You know, it was right. the same situation for me, too, because I remember the point um, being saying to myself, this has caused me to have severe mental illness. Mm -hmm. You know, this has caused mm -hmm. me pain. This has caused my, I don't have my family anymore. Right. So right. I had a desire to change. I actually went to uh, the Turning Point Club. That's what it was called back then. I've and heard of that. Yeah, it was a wonder, that. it's a wonderful organization. Um, now it's the Second Wind Foundation, but um, it's it's really good that we're able to find mm -hmm. what we need from other people. That's right. what that's what right. I think anyway. Right. And from that, see, once I once I found out about doing this, this is something that I wanted to cover for sure. That's awesome. Was mental health issues and right. addiction issues. That's awesome. Yeah. So I could see yeah. you do something like this. I yeah. bet you'd be great at doing a, like <laughs> a little TV show and interviewing people. Thanks. You know. No. My, my heart is for the people, and, yeah. and, and, um, and like I said, God brought me back, gave me a second chance, and, and once he saved my life, I, I immediately left Mass, never to go back. Oh, really? I've never been back. I go back now, after 18 years under my belt, and, I, yeah. and, and now I, I visit my family. I have a yeah. restored relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, my family loves me. I love them. Yeah. But, you know, they know I was a hard case, and I, yeah. and I hurt people, and I'm a fighter, and... Yeah. Um, and now I just, I just want to get back and I, I want people to know that they can change. Exactly, I was, yeah. I was the worst. I was the uh, bottom feeder. I was the bottom of the barrel. I hurt people. Mm -hmm. I robbed people. Um, and, and if I could change and, and God can heal me, change me, then other people can. And I, yeah. I, I want to offer that, so, you know, and that's, that's one reason why I formed the Grateful Cafe Sober Club is to give back. Right. Talk about that a little bit more about the grateful uh, the grateful cafe sober club. Cafe sober club. Okay. There you go. Um, I want to talk a little bit. Yeah. Where for first things first is where is this located? Uh, it, it it's located in my mind. It isn't actually an actual building. Okay. Um, but to to back step, I host events free. Oh, okay. For the community. Nice. And I um, I love Hope for New Hampshire Recovery. So they've allowed me to like host e free events and dances. Oh, so nice. I, I, I didn't plan on becoming an event organizer, but now I am. It's mm -hmm. like part of my title. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm okay with that. So I, um, I do free events for the community because I want to give back after 17 years in recovery, um, you know, and fight in substance use disorder and other, you know, other things and, and trying to be. Like I got, I got stagnant in my recovery as far as I want more. I, yeah. I, I was going to meetings, coming home, and I, I, I needed more, and I, yeah. want, I wanted to give back. So I wanted to form this organization that's a social nonprofit organization mm -hmm. uh, that connects lives mm -hmm. and, and that I want to end labels and stigmas. Yeah. So I am passionate about people today and about that you can change your life. I was the, the, the bottom of the barrel and you can become a winner, and you can turn your life over. So my organization, it, it took me almost, um, I'd say a, a good year and a half of, of you know, learning to create bylaws, articles mm -hmm. of incorporation. I had, to, I had to find nine people to be on my volunteer board or mm -hmm. steering committee. Mm -hmm. So I had to do all these things, and in the while I'm do, learning, to, like becoming a legitimate nonprofit above board so I could really help the community that I love, uh, I was doing free events while I was becoming a nonprofit. Right. So it, and then other people said, "Can you do an event here? Can you help us?" So I did a concert in the park. I do dances, but my organization isn't just about addicts and and alcoholics. It's about children, families, um, nice. you know, troubled teens that are going through. My organization isn't just about, it, it encompasses everybody. Mm. And I want to connect lives, not, not just, you know, I want to end labels and stigmas and know that you can coexist with a recovering addict or yeah. a recovering alcoholic. Oh. And a, a lot of people don't, like, I feel people have lost their empathy for one another. Yes, I, I think you're totally right. And what you're doing, what you're doing in this idea is 
you are making it so yeah. that people don't have to have that fear. Right. They can come together and have fun and experience each other without the fear, you know? Right. Because people do have fear. Right. It's understandable. Right. You know? and, and they're making friendships. Yeah. Children are making other friendships. I want to offer other tools like woodworking, right, uh, yeah. carpentry. I want to, my organization, like what I want to do, like there's nothing like it anywhere. Um, and there's a lot of great recovery programs out here. Yeah, yeah. But what I envision is artists can express their art. They can share with other artists, mm -hmm. and and musicians can collaborate with other musicians. Yes. Uh, and kids can connect with other kids, and I want to deepen the bond between parent and the child, all under one roof. There's nothing like it. Like, yeah. You want to you want to uh, talk a little bit about the organization. How can people find you and find out more about that? Uh, they can find me uh, on. They can friend request me on Facebook, Michael. Fitzpatrick, um, and I have an email. Should I say my email? Just yeah, go up. Sure. Mike Fitz, Mike, M I K E F I T Z P A T R I C K, Mike Fitzpatrick, 91 at yahoo.com. Um, my number is 603 273 8195. That's going to be subject to change soon. Uh, because my phone got broken. Well, that means you have to come back and give us a new one. <laughs> right. I'm going to have to come back and updated version. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, I am so excited about yeah, all this. Thanks. I mean, I think this is going to be great. And uh, I'd like to help you out a little bit by being able to produce this show. And then um, have you come back and just share. An how updated. It, yeah. How updated it's going, stuff. you know. Yeah. I, I also would like to reiterate or share that. That I wanna, I don't, I don't just envision my the the Grateful Cafe Sober Club, which is a social organization just in New Hampshire. I wanna put different chapters everywhere, so I have my work cut out. But that's what I envision for a lot of people. Okay, Mike, can yeah. I just tell you something? Sorry, you're talking over there, right? This is your camera. I'm sorry. Oh, that's my camera. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's I don't know. Okay. I just go. I'm hey, just, everybody. I'm just a yeah. Like, this is his first oh, time. It's okay. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> that's good. Well, I hope I don't embarrass anybody. So no, especially no, me. You're fine. But hey, yeah. But you know, I I I just was really encouraged when I was reading your stuff on Facebook and learning more about what you were doing. You'd gone to Washington. We advocated you for loved ones lost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in, in people like you are making this stuff happen, and you're helping so many people. Um, and I just want to encourage you, just keep doing what you're doing, and, and thank you very much you're for doing welcome. this. You're welcome. I love you know? people, and I love... Yeah. Oh, yeah, you I, can tell. I do. Yeah, I yeah. love people, and I definitely want to give back today. And I definitely, you know, loved ones lost, ending labels and stigmas is what I'm about. And right. I want to I, I, I wanna do away with labels and stigmas, because a lot of people, when they associate with an addict, they think negative. Right. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to end that and change all that. So, but it's in his time, not mine. So, right. Not only that, but yeah. it's, this sounds like a mission that you were given, and that you're you're so um, passionate about I because am. this is this is your passion. I'm passionate this for is the what people. You, yeah, and this yes. is what you found is passion to pass on yes. the messages and to create all this great stuff for people. And um, I mean, I can I can just tell. I can see just by talking with you on Facebook and and checking out your organization there. Well, I live to inspire, and I think yeah. if I can just reach one person, I'm happy. I've completed what well, I've done. Well, you definitely reached me. So, so, so. and thank uh, you. this thank will, you. this thank show you. will be a part of Facebook, YouTube, and stuff like that. So, but I want I definitely want the audience to know that you are going to come back and keep us up to date. We want oh, to see definitely. we want to see how this is growing, you know, how it's how it's going. I will know? definitely update you and yeah, give you yeah. give you uh, positive results. Like like I, I'll just throw out one thing. I was walking the other day to go to Hope for New Hampshire Recovery, to, to go to a meeting and to volunteer, help out people yeah. like I do uh, when I'm not working, yeah. uh, or creating videos to promote uh, Nice. My organization or other people's organization. I also create videos. Oh, nice! Cool videos to promote other people. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah. So I was walking the other day. This fancy car pulls up. I didn't know it was an old church friend of mine. So. Oh, nice. So, so the 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 blessing of that is she's like, 
I showed her my 501c3 papers, yep. and she was like, that's incredible. Yeah. Let me help you with, I want to donate, like pay your first month's rent oh. of a building. So now I have to find a building because she's going to cover the first month's rent. At least it's my foot in the door. So God right. is it's just, just I'm moving, and I'm uh, amazed. At it. Right, and every little yeah. step gets easier and easier and easier. Yeah, I'm just amazed. That's yeah. all. I'm just really well, blown away. Yeah, and well, yeah. I am too, totally. I'm, I, you know, I... Uh, I definitely want to say how much I appreciate everything that you're doing. I really do, Thanks. you know. Thank um, you. I'm I really, appreciate that. I'm really yeah. passionate about recovery too, and I can just see when you find what it is inside of you that you want to uh, to help people with and to share and to yeah. you know make a difference in people's life, which you definitely are. I am. Uh, I'm I, trying. I'm yeah, trying. Yeah, I think that's I'm most trying. important. But uh, we are getting ready to wrap up now, so I want to make sure because. The, now, remember, this is your camera here. So okay, That's right. yours, right? Gotcha. <laughs> but right. I want to make sure that you give people information how to find you again. And then you're sure. so good at giving inspiration. Maybe Thanks. you can give a little inspirational Thanks. message to people. Um, I know you should never quit because your miracle's about to happen. Okay, you got, you got to believe in yourself um, and, and push onward. You got to push onward. And, um, you know, I... But I believe in you, and I know you can do it. Um, and that's it. Thank you. And uh, Mike Fitzpatrick, 91 at yahoo.com. Uh, so email me. Love to hear from you. Thank you. And, and this is Linda Carbonauer. I, I mean, this is a great. I mean, I just happened to find Mike and uh, checked out your, your Facebook, and it was just wonderful, all things that I'd seen that he was, that he was doing. So... You know, and this is a passion of mine too, so I wanted to make sure that uh, you all could hear that there's a now an organization that's uh, going around that's going to be really helpful and another tool for you guys. So, Mike, Definitely. I just want to thank you so much for being here. I really want to thank you for having me. Yeah, Linda. and you're going to come back and give us updates, too, Oh, I right? definitely will. Okay. I definitely will. Yeah. I will. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's thank been you. an honor being here. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's been an really. honor having you here. Thanks. I feel good about it. <laughs> good. Thank you. Thank you. So, anyway, this is Linda Carbono, and we are saying goodbye for Walking Through Life today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Walking through this life of mine. So many things Like how to love And how to lose And how to choose Walking through this life I get so tired and I feel that I can't